Western Washington has over 3,000 miles of coastline, from the outer Pacific coast to the interior Puget Sound, offering an abundance of not only beauty, but also life. But along with concerns over climate change and pollution comes another threat, the invasion of the European green crab. This invasive species could do damage from our outer coasts through the Salish Sea and into Puget Sound, damaging and even potentially destroying our local ecosystem. With invasive species, once it becomes a disaster, it's too late. Alan Ployce is the Aquatic Invasive Species Unit Manager for the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. And European green crab are one of those very bad actors that when they find a new area, they reproduce and they do harm. Just last January, Governor Jay Inslee issued an emergency order after thousands of European green crabs were found in the Lemmy Nation Sea Pond and on the outer coast. This infestation has gotten so bad that we're beyond the point of being able to fully eradicate this species. Instead, efforts are underway to keep their population under control. So our effort is to keep them under control, and control means below a threshold where they are less or not a harm to our environment, to the economy, or to cultural resources in the state. What that number is, we don't know. DFW is not alone in this fight. Local tribes have gotten involved and partnered with Fish and Wildlife to fight the European green crab invasion, including the Lummi and Macaw tribes. This infestation is strongest in the Lemmy Nation Sea Pond near Bellingham, where last year more than 70,000 green crabs were found. There's also major infestations on the outer coast, including Nia Bay, Grays Harbor, and Willapa Bay. But in recent months, the European green crab has also been found in the Hood Canal near Seebeck. And so we are working with our tribal co-managers. They are a critical uh, partner in this, co-manager of this resource. And um, we're also working with the shellfish growers. We're working with whoever wants to help us in this endeavor. Taylor Shellfish is one of our area's top producers of locally sourced seafood. The company has also been heavily involved in advocacy for clean water. And they've joined this fight as this invasion poses a huge threat to their shellfish farms located throughout our region. Yeah, I think for now it's really more the, uh, the unknown and the threat. Bill Dewey is the spokesman for Taylor Shellfish and he's also a shellfish grower. He says that so far trapping efforts appear to be paying off. And, and it's, you know, hopefully paying dividends. We had a couple uh, years where we caught about 100 each, and then this summer the trapping's been slow. I think we've only caught about 18 crabs so far after two months of trapping this year. This is a very simple area uh, okay. to trap, right, yeah. but imagine like channels everywhere. And you have Chelsea Buffington is a biologist for the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife working on the Green Crab Project. The, the number one um, thing to look for for European green crab to identify them are these five spines. Buffington has been trapping European green crabs on the outer Washington coast from Willapa Bay to this location in Grays Harbor near Westport where there's a strong infestation. Willapa and Grays Harbor have uh, pretty high populations. Uh, you know, typically any trap that we set, we see green crab in them. They ripped the heads off. Oh, they chopped up this uh, spoken. Green crab are ecosystem engineers. That's what a lot of people, the buzzword lately is an ecosystem engineer. Uh, you know, they outcompete with our native species. They are predators. They have uh, very big appetites. They kind of eat anything that they can get their hands on. Given the size of the Washington coastline and multiple concerns over using chemical agents to control European green crabs, trapping has become the biggest and best weapon so far in this fight. These areas like behind me, it's just vast. There, you know, we can't set a trap every nook and cranny and there's not a lot of other options in terms of removal. And while trapping and containing these small crabs is no small task, those involved in this collaborative effort say that this isn't only a worthy fight, it's also a huge opportunity to control European green crabs before they can deal a devastating blow to Washington's fragile ecosystem. Most people say, well, if they're going to be here forever, why, why even try? And um, unfortunately, in the invasive species field, 
That's a, that's a common refrain. And our job has been, and we've been successful, to be able to say, we need to try, we need to do it, especially when we have such an incredible opportunity at the front end of an invasion of a very bad species that we can do something.